We met at university in Glasgow in 1947. I was 19 and Ethna was 17. I really did fall in love with Ethna at first sight. We didn't get married until June 19, 1957. We had a bit of growing up to do. We were compared to youngsters and of course we had our studies to complete. We both qualified in medicine and then we got married. Oh, it was a gorgeous day. It was really beautiful. The, the sun really shone. We had a lovely wedding reception and finally we were told that we would have to stop dancing and leave as it was coming to the end of the reception for about ten years in succession. We went down to Abersoch and you know, in North Wales, and we had some lovely family holidays there. We attempted a bit of boating. We finally tried to take up golf, and it turned out that there was a much better golfer than I ever, and than I ever was. Around about 1980, we started talking, and we decided that we would take pre-planned early retirement. This would enable us to do the things that hitherto we hadn't been able to do. And in 1989, September 1989, we retired. Sadly, Ethna was diagnosed six months later as having Alzheimer's. My initial response was, my world's come to an end. I mean, we pre-planned everything, you know. I was very clever. I'd worked out my sums. It was very smug. It was a shattering blow. What do doctors do when they're upset? Have a few drinks. <laughs> it's very easy to do that. You know? And of course, what one had to carry on. But it was very, very hard. But I had to do my best. The thing about these dementing illnesses, it's really a, a, a series of deprivation for the person concerned, they're deprived of their memory, they're deprived of their understanding, you know, they don't know what's going on, and they're deprived of their will, they're not able to do the things for themselves, they can't feed themselves, they can't dress, and for the carer, it's being deprived of companionship. What do you miss most? Etha being around and Etha eating meals on my own, which fortunately I'm in the position that the family is very good, but eating meals is very lonely. And I miss physical contact with Etha. I don't know whether Ethna knows when I'm here. But the nurses say that she eats better when I'm around and she seems to be more, more aware of her surroundings. And I would certainly hate to think that Ethna was sitting wondering, where is Jo? For a long, long time, one of the ways to bring a uh, smile to Ethna's face was to put on Marlon Dietrich singing Falling in Love Again. That she used to love that. I, I thought, Ethna's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, that's the end of things. It's not the end of things. It isn't a precipice diagnosis. I mean, people can still, they've still got potential, they've still got ability. And I think the great thing is to realise that after diagnosis, for as long as possible, we've got to maximise people's potential to get them to live as fruitful a life as possible. And, you know, to lead as normal a life as possible. And sometimes when I come in, when she's relaxed and she's sleeping and her thin, see, she hasn't changed all that.